people, 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 people. Que pasa, sapa, say what they do. Welcome to Crime Time News, where the difference is in the meds. Call it news with a buzz. The video that is presently on your screen is of a man. It is said that seems as if he did not take his medication in chip lick. He went to the JN Bank and he demanded $350,000. The problem is that he did not have an account. The problem is that he did not went in with the regular tools of the trade. However, he used a big stone and smashed the glass. Needless to say, when he smashed the glass, the security and the popo, they were summons. He did the right, appropriate thing. In Wakwe, and he walked towards the back of the popo jeep, and he sit down. He knew what was coming. So therefore, moral of the story, Tom is D-R-U-N-K, but Tom is no fool. Point blank and period. Now the next thing that is popping in the news, it is called justice delayed is justice denied. There's a high profile case in the courts as we speak. It is Noel Maitland, the officer that took away his girlfriend, Donna Lee Donaldson. To most observers, observers of this case, we would say that this is a slam dunk case. This man should have been tried, convicted and sentenced already. Based on the amount of evidence, based on the amount of audio, based on the amount of persons that saw exactly what transpired. However, people, in Jamaica, things are a little bit different, mainly because of corruption, mainly because persons are using Sykes. Now, yesterday, there was some sort of case management hearing. What that means is that the prosecution and the defense will tell the judge where they are at as it pertains to evidence sharing. However, it was disclosed to the judge. The judge was distressed. The judge was disgusted that the investigators did not turn over any sorts of evidence, any sorts of statement, any sorts of documentation to the prosecutors. The prosecutors would then share those documents with the defense. The judge blasted the investigator. The judge said, how is that this is happening once again when there was already a delay in the hearing, in this hearing? There was an extension given until November of 2022. It is now February of 2023. And even with an extension in November, come February 2023, still no sorts of evidence. The judge made it very clear. Listen, I am going to give you until May 26th. And then we are going to have the hearing on June 2nd of 2023 this year. Me no want to hear no sorts of excuse. Me no want to hear say, the dog take away your homework, rate, lay, lay, blue, blah, bling. Just make sure say, you have the documentation. Now people, whenever stuff like this happens, what it does, it opens the door. It gives the defense lawyer an opportunity to claim even in a case or even upon appeal that the prosecution did not follow the protocols. So therefore, this man can basically walk even if he gets convicted, which he should. So people, when you think about stuff like this and the judge have to be warning these people, so many extensions of disclosure of material evidence whatever for the case 
don't you come to the same conclusion that I do, that these officers, these investigators are looking out for their own. Even if we give them the benefit of the doubt, that means that they are irresponsible, they are negligent, they are incompetent. I think that they are doing their never best for make sure say, this man does not get convicted. This man does not see a day behind bars like he should. People, this is very disturbing. Based on the amount of evidence, based on everything that we've seen thus far, how is it that the prosecution don't have the evidence to share with the defense so that the case can proceed? Needless to say, the lawyer for Mr. Maitland, they applied for bail. The judge said he need or she needs the proper documentation until they meet in court again in June of 2023, the 2nd of June, I think. Now, we have to also remember that the last time Mr. Maitland went to court and he tried to get some sorts of bail, it was denied on the basis that he is a flight risk on the basis that he might obstruct justice, meaning that get in contact with the witness or witnesses, witnesses might actually disappear. So therefore, they denied it the first time. People, what is going to happen? Now that the prosecution, the investigators are not giving the prosecution the documentation, to share with the defense team, people, can this turn the way that the judge, Mrs. Graham Allen, feels about this man getting bail? This is Jamaica. What do you expect? Now, the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that there's all sorts of controversy and drama as it pertains to the amendment of the Traffic Act. That was implemented on the 1st of February 2023. Based on what people are saying, it seems as if this is a money making scheme. It is not to deter people from committing all sorts of traffic infraction, it is to balance the budgets and people like the PR expert that the JCF is. They made a post on social media and they were declaring that in five days time, they made about 30 something million dollars. They posted the exact figure on their social media platform. Since then, people are saying, see, we told you so. And people, you cannot blame persons for saying that when it seems as if they are rubbing in the faces of persons that are already distressed. We understand that the second cause of the most DEATH in Jamaica is all sorts of ACCIDENTS on the road. The number one, you know, people getting pie pie up, all sorts of anger management problem. Now, people. A lawyer, a prominent lawyer in Jamaica, his name is Gavin Goff. Listen exactly what he has to say as it pertains to the new traffic law amendment. And then I will give my piece. There is a lot of commentary about whether the thinking behind the act and the motivation is actual road safety or it's revenue collection. Um, we see a tweet coming from the um, JCF that they collected $35 million or the issued tickets valued $35 million in simply five days. That's not a good look in the sense of, I don't think our police should be advertising that and saying, look how much money it is that we have been ticketing. Because if you're trying to convince people that this is about road safety, as opposed to revenue collection, that's not the kind of PR you should be putting out. People, you hear what the lawyer say. You have to be sensitive. You have to be sensible. You have to 
have proper PR persons that are making the decision, that are making these posts on social media. Whenever people are down, people are stressed out, you do not want to step in their head. That is the worst thing that you can do. Now, since then, the Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, has also responded to the backlash because people are saying them only want to balance the budget. It is a money-making scheme. It is not to save life. It is not to deter persons from committing any other sorts of traffic infraction. Take a listen, take a look to what your Prime Minister has to say and then I'll give my peace. The government has no real interest in earning money from bad behavior. It is there as a penalty to prevent bad behavior. So while I've taken careful note of this argument being presented, that the fines are too high, which is effectively to say that we want lower fines so that we can pay them and continue to breach. The idea of the high fine is to say to you, don't breach. We're not interested in the money. We're interested in your safety. I think that needs to be said. Now, people, the facts are the facts. And yes, Jamaicans are a set of disorderly people, especially the people who it affects the most. Minibus man and taxi man. They are a set of virago without a shadow of a doubt. However, whenever you make amendments that are not practical, whenever these amendments, the fees are too high, especially when you are dealing with a country that is considered third world, that means uh, most people, they are living below the poverty line, even if they might drive. It is out of the reach, so therefore you are only stressing out the pocket of the people and yes, you have to find or strike some sorts of balance. However, we see that the government of Jamaica, including Andrew Holness and the relevant authority, they are not practical, they are not professional, they need advice themselves. These amendments need to be amended properly. People actually need to sit down behind some sorts of conference table and come up with some sorts of amicable agreement because as it stands right now, it makes absolutely no sorts of sense. Point blank and period. Now people, if you remember, I said it in a video that I did previously, that these white collar choppers have been chopping the line for a very long time years upon top of years if you check every single bank financial institution in a jamaica there is some sorts of fraud there is some sorts of what they call misappropriation of public funds people a justice of the peace a paralegal 50-year-old Georgia Messam White. It is said that she's been chopping the line from 19, sorry, 2018. Based on information, it is said that a businessman, he came to do some sorts of business. He purchased a property through her or through the company that she represents. He paid 27 million plus Jamaican dollars to her. This money was supposed to be turned over to the lawyer. However, after years, within a 2023 right now, the lawyer still not get the money. So therefore, four or five years later, no money turned over. Documentation, yes, it was sold. Documentation, yes, she received the money. However, what did she think was going to happen? Did she actually think that the people were not going to wonder? Hold on. Me not just buy a property. Who have the property? Who have the money? The lawyer, the paralegal, the justice of the peace. People, 
Remember, these persons are justice of the peace a people where you go to. When you want to verify, validate, and vet anybody's character. However, these people that people put on a pedestal, they are just as bad or even worse than the common man, the common thief. Because they have that trust factor. So people are willing to turn over their money, their asset, their property, their deed, their title to these people. Not knowing that you have the wolf, the hyena and the fox. I watch the chicken cub. They filed a complaint and the popo arrested her the other day. Now what was the delay? I am sure that she has always been giving these people all sorts of excuses. You know that there's been a delay in the paperwork at the tax office. Rete, lele, blue, blah, bling. People. These people are full of S-H-I-T like crab. But like I've said before, there's a survey that was done. 95% of people living in middle class, they are living above their means. What this simply means is that they are spending more than they are making. They are trying to keep up with the Jones. And when persons are trying to keep up with the Jones, they are always going to be in the red. That means uh, debt, debt, point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. I understand that this might be your grandma's favorite YouTube channel. However, this is not the average, typical run of the mill mama and papa channel. This is news with a buzz. If you appreciate videos like this, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting and sharing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. Bless up.